Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. In this video, we are going to cover 7 Java collections and Java 8 hacks that instantly upgrade your coding style. If you use these techniques while writing the Java 8 or the collections or any simple Java code, it will build confidence in interviewers that you have a really good coding style. So let's get started. Most of the Java developers like us use the outdated patterns like manual looping, verbose conditioning checks, the boilerplate data code filtering without using the Java streams for the filters. This wastes a lot of time with adding bugs and kills the productivity of us. This video shows the more elegant way of using the alternatives that collections API and stream gives to us. Now the first hack is if you want to do filtering, what are the two ways you can do? The first way is if you have the names as the list and you need to create another list with some filtered inputs. For example, if you have Joan, Jane, Jack and Jill, uh, or I can make it as code and decode, then I want to filter out only those names who starts with J. So only Joan and Jane will be filtered out. What you would have done, you could have written a for loop and then you have would have written a filter like if condition here. But these five, six lines of code can be easily converted into this name on using the stream you can filter using java 8 filter method and then you give the condition that if it starts with the j then give a collection to the new list and fetch that as a new list called as filtered list so just three lines of code will be able to give you the filtered result rather than this for loop which will iterate over your collection then giving a if condition which will do the filter task so this is how you can manually replace your filtering logic with the stream.filters. This manual filtering is error prone, prone and verbose while using stream.filter makes the code more concise, readable and functional. It also supports chaining and parallelism. You can use multiple chainings and filters also and you can also use parallel stream also to if you want to do things and who do not interfere with each other, you can do it with parallel streams also. Hey guys, recently we have launched a course covering an end-to-end -end full stack application using Angular as front end and microservices and Spring Boot as the back end. Also, we have used Cloud to deploy this application and we have used CI CD that is Jenkins and Argo CD for continuous integration and continuous deployment. The technologies that we have used is REST, RESTful Web Services, Spring Boot, and Microservices for back end, Angular for front end, GitHub we have used for version control system. Also, to make the code unit testable, we have used JUnits. We have used Sonar for code quality checks. Also, for containerization, we have used Docker and Kubernetes. And to deploy this whole application, we have used AWS and multiple services from AWS. Also, we have used SQL as well as NoSQL, that is MongoDB and SQL. On AWS, since for the SQL, we have RDS, we have used those services. And Jenkins and Argo CD for CI CD pipeline. Also, this is an architecture of the application that we have created where the front end is Angular and the back end is microservices. We have used ALB load balancers, Ingress for routing and load balancing. And we have used SQL and MongoDB for SQL and NoSQL DB management with Eureka server and all those microservices counterparts. Now, this is the CI CD pipeline. This is the CI CD flowchart for the application that we have created on local. So, this is something a flow when you create an application in local, push it to GitHub, create a Jenkins pipeline and do the CI CD uh, using Jenkins and Argo CD. And at the end, deploy the whole code at AWS EKS. Complete description of this course is covered in a very separate video. The link for that video is also given in the description bar below. And also the link to purchase that course from Udemy is also in the description bar below. So please go and check the description for all these links. The second hack is converting the list to map using the collectors.map. Initially, how you if given a particular list, how do you create a map? So suppose you have a list of people, you want to create the map where the key is the ID of the person and name is the value of that person. Then what you would have done, you would have created a new map. You would have a person list. In that map, you would have put the key as the ID and the value as the name. But the Collectors two map is a very beautiful way of converting this list of person into the key and the value just by giving the collectors two map in the collect terminal operation. So what you would have done is on this list of people, 
you would have created a stream and on that while collecting only you would have created a map so this list is converted to two map using collectors terminal method so this avoids unnecessary looping and it is concise readable and great for mapping object for the key value pair the third hack is you can use the group by or the grouping by of the collectors now initially now this is a bit complicated man okay suppose you have a list of employees and they all have some departments now you have to group the list of employees with their departments one department may have one or more employees so there will be a key as the department or the string and value will be the list of employees so what you could have done the worst code is the on the list of employees you create a for loop and you fetch the department then you on the department that map that you have created earlier you fetch does this department as a key already exist if it does not exist then create a new list and add the new add the employee to the new list and put this key also into the map so map dot put key and the new list and into that new list add the employee what if the list is already present then directly go and add to the new list let me give you an example there is a person called as code whose department is cs there is also one person called as decode his department is also cs so first of all when when you start as a first iteration initially your department becomes cs your list becomes null because in the department map in, in at the initial phase you do not have any department to it so list becomes null so what it does is the list has to be created as a new list and this is going to be put in the department map so department map initially has an empty array list and into that empty array list with the key as cs this m after this loop has ended here we add the code as the list so initially where this empty list was there now with this line the code is added to this empty list now the second time in the second loop again the department is fetched which is cs list is this time not empty it has cs and code is the employee it checks whether the list is empty it says no then directly add it to the list so decode is added to the cs list now the cs as a key has two employees code and decode now there is another way to do it again that is compute if absent i am going to cover compute if absent also in the upcoming hack but what it does is compute if absent checks if the department map is already null or not null if it is null then this is used to create the new array list and put the map under the department and returns it and then you add the employee but if it is simply present so if it is not absent then simply return the result or the list and then at the end you add the list of employees to it add the employee to the list and the third and the best way to handle is collectors dot grouping by so you have seen this 10 line of code you have also seen these three line of code but the best way is this one single line of code so this is how you convert your 10 line of code to three lines of code to one single line of code so what you would have done here is on the employees you stream and you collect but during collect you group by each employee with their department so this is how you create a map of key as the whatever you group by that is department and the list of all the employees who belongs to that department internally this checks whether the list is empty if it is empty creates a new list and add that new department in the new empty list in the map and at the end also adds the employee to the empty list if it is not empty directly adds this so all this task for you is given and done by this one single line of code isn't this beautiful so this is how you can improve your 10 line of code to three line of code with compute if absent and to one single line of code with collectors dot grouping by so grouping by is very messy but group grouping logic is actually very messy but grouping by lets you do it declarative in single line and it is very highly readable also here i can just see that okay i have the collections of the list on which stream is open and while i'm collecting that stream objects i collect in such a way that i create a map map is created with a key that is a department and the value are going to be all the employees who belong to that department because grouping by does that internally for me the fourth is a replace nested loops with flat map 
Now suppose I have project and project have multiple tasks. So suppose I have three projects and all the three projects have three tasks. So total how many tasks? Nine tasks. So I want to collect all the tasks. So first I'll create four by four because first I need to iterate over all the projects. For each project fetch all tasks. Then create a new list with all tasks and add each task of each project into it. Now the second time for the second project and third time for the third project. This for and for loop internal of n square could have been converted easily into more robust and not a cluttered logic. That is, for all the tasks, first stream over project. When the stream is created of all the project, you need to map each project with their task. And each task is going to be the list again. So now you have to stream each task with the title. So at the end, what you have is all the projects are mapped to the list of tasks. And each task is mapped to the title. So total, if there are nine projects, sorry, three projects, each project with three tasks. So this will create the nine task. And this nine task then is mapped to their titles and then collected to the list. And this will give you project task list. So this is a powerful way of flattening. This is the flattening. You convert your project to their task. And then over the stream of, it, of it, you, you also get the title. So this is for and for can be easily converted to a single list using the flat map. It is a powerful way of flattening the streams and simplifying the data extraction hierarchy. The fifth hack is eliminating the null checks. I have already covered this, but before if you use these kinds of check, user not null, user get email not null, you can use option dot off null label first on the user, then on the email and if present send the email. So this is a beautiful way of converting this if, if, if kind of DOM into one single optional way. And this is also syntactically good sugar and it promotes null safety check and encourages a functional programming. The sixth one I've already covered that is compute of absent to avoid the contains plus put logic. So this con compute of absent checks whether the key is present. If it is present, return the value. If it is not present, create the empty list or empty whatever you write the logic here and return it to you and then you can do whatever you want to. So for example, it checks whether the key is present or not. If it is present get, for the get key, you get, you get the value and to that list you add this add something to that list. If it is not present, that means you have to first put the key value pair into it. The key becomes what you are searching it is not there and the value becomes the empty array list and then you add it the value to it. Now this whole logic, this four line of logic can be done in one single line. That is on the map, compute if absent. If the key is absent, create the new array list for that key and add that key comma empty array list to the map. And at the end, add the value to it. Or if it is already present and not absent, just return the list whatever it is and then add the a value to it. So this is a collection framework at its smartest level. No need to check keys before inserting. One line does it all for you. Now the seventh hack is remove if condition for deletion. Now you what you do is if you do iterator.remove, it will give you an exception just if you check if it is not empty and it, it, it has next to it. So what you do is you iterate over the list. You check does it has next. If it till the time you don't get to the end of it, you check if the next is empty. If it is empty, remove it. What you can do rather than manually iterating over it and checking whether the next is empty or not, you can just use remove if. Now this remove if the string is empty or not helps you to manual iterate and then it is safe, concise and easier to understand. The last one is the beautiful bonus hack for you. There are chances that you create a collection, but create collections that you create is completely mutable. So suppose if you have three list data, that is A, B, C, that can be easily mod modified if you have new array list kind of data. But if you use list.off or map.off, this creates immutable data. With that means you cannot change it going forward. So list.off and map.off since Java 9 creates immutable, which is actually unmodified structure for the collection. So once you create, you cannot add, you cannot remove, or you cannot change the items and any attempt throws unsupported operation exception. So these collections are thread safe for concurrent read write access and further helps in synchronization also because their state will never change. That was all about the bonus hacks and all the seven hacks we have used. If you want to know more about this, just let me know in the comment section. Thank you.